Howdy folks, so in today's video I'm going to show you how to create this text callout graphic inside of Adobe After Effects. I'm going to be breaking this down step by step, and if you want to download my After Effects project file, just head down to the video description, find the link down there. I'm also going to be putting together some Mogurt templates for you Premiere Pro users, so be sure to check those out as well. For the first step, I'm going to go grab the pen tool, and then over here I'm going to turn my fill off, set it to none, and I'm going to turn the stroke and set it to solid color. And then I'm gonna turn the color to white. This is just whatever color you want. And I'm gonna set the stroke to 15. And now all I need to do is set two points to draw a line. So I'm gonna set one and then set the other. It doesn't matter where they are. Now I have my line. There's a new shape layer down here. I'm gonna click on this, hit enter, and I'm gonna call this line. For the next step, I wanna create some null layers that are gonna allow me to control this callout graphic. So for that, I'm gonna to go to window and then all the way at the bottom here, you'll find a script called Create Nulls from Paths. I'm gonna click on this and it launches our panel here. Now again, this particular script is available for free. It comes with Adobe After Effects and I think it was introduced around version 2018 and later. So what this allows me to do is take the points of this path and attach them to nulls, which allows me to control this path via the nulls. Because right now, if I wanted to control this, I'd have to double click and dive down and double click, double click. And it's, you see, it's just clunky trying to, uh, trying to get in here and actually do it. Now, if I simply have the shape layer selected and I click on points follow nulls, you're gonna see I get an error message. It says no path selected. I actually have to dive down into this layer. So I'm gonna select the layer and then in the keyword search bar, I'm gonna type in path and I actually have to grab the path, not just the group, but the actual path. And now when I click on points follow nulls, you'll see it automatically creates these two null objects and they're attached to our points. Obviously, if I had multiple points, it's gonna create a null layer for each particular point. So this can be very, very useful if you're creating like a map path and you wanna create things at each point. You could have each point be a city or whatever, and then you can use other features of this like trace path, which is gonna automatically animate something along your path and loop it. Um, this script is really powerful. I'm gonna create some more tutorials on it because it's just so, so, so powerful. So many things you can do with it. Now, I want this to have a start point and an end point. As you saw in the example, we start on Queensland here and it animates out to the end where the text element's gonna be. So I'm just gonna rename these null layers. This one, I'm gonna call end, and this one, I'm gonna call start. I'm gonna grab my line and I'm gonna type in cap for the line cap, and I'm gonna switch this to round and that's just gonna round off the actual end here. Okay, next I wanna add these little circles on both ends. So I'm gonna grab the shape tool and switch it to ellipse, and I'm gonna turn the fill on, set the color to white, and I'm going to turn the stroke off. Set it to none. And now I'm gonna hold shift, click and drag, and um, I can create this here. Now what's going on? It looks like the opacity, yeah, the opacity's at 50%. Don't want that. Now with this new shape layer, I'm gonna call it start as well. And I'm gonna open up the ellipse. I wanna do a few things here. First, I wanna center it out. So I'm gonna open up the transformation properties of the shape group. And I'm gonna set position to zero and zero. That's gonna center it. And then I'm gonna grab the path and I'm gonna set the size to something really small. Like, now let's set it to 75. So now I've got this circle here and I wanna attach this one directly to our start, which is right here. So for this, I'm just gonna go to our start null layer and hit the P key to open up position. And then I'm gonna grab the start shape layer, hit P, and then I can grab the property pick whip, not the layer pick whip. And I'm gonna connect the position here. And that's gonna snap the start marker to the beginning of my path here. And now watch, look how cool this is. If I grab that null layer and move it around, now my marker is snapped right there. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the start and I'm gonna name it to end and I'll grab the position here and I'm gonna simply do the same thing. I'm gonna open up position of the null object and I'm gonna grab the property pick whip, attach it to this one and now voila, I've got this path with my null layers controlling it and now I've got the markers on here. All right, now let's add some text. I'm gonna go grab my text tool and let's type out uh, Queensland. As you'll see in my comp, I called this call out right and because I want the text to be on the right side here. So I'm gonna to go to paragraph and make sure that it's left aligned so that it, any changes I make, it's gonna stay snapped to the left here. And I'm gonna kind of loosely position it here where I want it. And what I can do is um, I can grab this near the edge here and I can hold the control key and that's gonna kind of snap it to different areas and I can snap it right to 
um, the center of my marker here or the edge of my null layer here. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can rig this up, you know, just do whatever you personally prefer, but I like to grab the text here and then basically parent that to the null object. So I'm going to grab that, pick with that, and now if I move this, it's going to move, but look what else is going to happen. If I scale this up, it's going to scale the text with it, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to still have all the capabilities that if I want, I can move the text here, I can resize the text further um, in the character panel. And one other trick you can do is this is still a little bit annoying trying to grab inside of this null object here. So what you can do is scale this up so you can have plenty of room to grab and it's a little bit easier. Um, and I'm going to do that on this one. I'm just going to um, unparent Queensland here so I can actually scale this up without affecting. And then I'll reattach this one here. Now everything's rigged up and I simply need to animate all these assets. Now there's four assets. We have the two markers, the path, and the text element. So let's focus on the path first. I'm going to grab the line and I'm going to add a trim paths animator over here in the add menu. Select trim paths and I'm going to open this up and we're going to be animating the end. So I want this to animate on over the course of one second maybe, maybe even faster than that. So I'm going to add a keyframe for 100 and then I'm going to bring this back down to zero. So you can see it's animating on there. Now we can simply add easy ease, go to the graph editor. Now for this, I can make it come in real fast and then kind of slow way down. So it shoots out and then slows down. That's looking okay. Now I just want the markers to come on along with the path. So first the start marker, then the end marker. Now I could animate these uh, manually via the opacity, but I have a better way that I like a lot more. So I'm gonna go to window and open up effects and presets, and I'm just gonna search fade. And this is one of my favorite um, presets. It's under behaviors and it's fade in and out via frames. So what this is gonna allow me to do, if I grab both of my shape layers here, in fact, I'm gonna apply this to all three of my assets here, the text and the markers. And I'm just gonna double click fade in out frames. And if you look over here, you can see what it does. It applies the, these effects and we can specify the number of frames that it's gonna animate in and animate out, the duration of the animations. The really cool thing is that these stick to our points, our in and out points. So as I trim this, I don't have to move any keyframes. So we'll have the start is gonna animate on um, pretty much right where it is. So I'm just going to turn it down and make these five frames so that I animate on much quicker. And I'm actually going to grab the line and we'll have that animate in after the start marker comes in. Okay. And then right when this hits here, we'll have the end one come in. So I'm going to grab the end and I'm going to hold the alt key left bracket and that's going to trim that. And I'm going to do the same thing for the text, alt left bracket. And just like that, we should have those there. And now I'm going to go to both of these um, and we're going to set these. We'll do 10 frames. Let's see how that looks. Okay, much better. And actually, I'm going to set that, whatever we set for the in duration, I'm going to set for the out duration as well. So 10 frames out. And so super simple, I've got my animation in here. Now I just need to basically duplicate these and reverse them. So I'm gonna copy these keyframes here, on my line, uh, my trim paths, paste it, and then right click, go to keyframe assistant, and then select time reverse keyframes. And then I'm gonna simply drag it to the end here, and then minus a couple of frames. And now all I need to do is find the distance between this trim point and this keyframe. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's about six, key, uh, six frames and I'll duplicate it on this side. And I'll grab these, Alt, right bracket, and that's gonna trim them. And now I should have a full-blown animation here. Very cool, and it's looping. So the final touch is I'm gonna make these responsive design for time. And let me show you what that's gonna do. Over here in composition, I can go to responsive design time and there's create intro, outro, and protected region from work area. So first I'm gonna create an intro and what that's gonna do is that's gonna protect this region here. So once I pre-comp this, it'll basically not touch this. It'll, if I'm moving um, or trimming my pre-comp, my nested composition, it will automatically retime everything in between, but it will keep this. So I can basically uh, retime that animation so I can make it 10 seconds and these animation in and out 
are going to stay intact. They're not going to change the, the duration, um, but this middle part will, will stretch and grow. Now I'm going to go back, composition, responsive design, time, create outro. I just need to make sure that this covers all of the keyframes and protects them. Now the reason I do that is I can go here and I can grab my call out and then if I pre-comp it and I have it here, check this out. I can see my protected regions and now if I go to composition settings and I stretch this, you know, let's make this composition like 15 seconds now. Now as I retime this, check it out. It's basically keeping those protected regions and I can stretch it out and now I have this graphic which is going to last 10 seconds and it's going to animate back out. But obviously we wouldn't have our map and all this stuff. We would just have the callout graphic in our pre-comp here. Once again, this project will be available for download. Follow that link in the video description. And I'm also creating some Mogret templates for you Premiere Pro users. I'm gonna have a freebie available. Donations are always appreciated for those freebies, but I'll also be putting together a premium pack. And um, I don't know when that's gonna be available, but just check my website. When I finish the premium pack, I'll be posting the links here in the video description of this video. If you wanna check out another cool tutorial that's using the same technique here, but a little bit different, I'm gonna to link to another one that I basically animated this racetrack and I have a little marker looping on the racetrack and it's, um, it's pretty cool. So as always, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more cool uh, tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you're always aware of new uploads and new content. I really appreciate your views, your comments, your likes, your shares. It really helps me out. Downloading those freebies helps out. And I hope this stuff is helpful for you. If it is, please let me know in the comment section. All right, take it easy.